Hi, I'm Bill Humber, and this is our first season of The Green Citizen, and we're at the Toronto and Region Conservation Authority. And our guest today is Wilfred Ho, a graduate of the Environmental Technology Program in the Centre for the Built Environment at Seneca College in Toronto. Will, it's great to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Well, you are an alumnus of Seneca College now. You've, you've gone through the environmental field. Tell us a little bit about Will Ho. Where, where did you grow up? Uh, what got you interested in the environmental field? Well, I grew up you know, between North York and Scarborough. I bounced a lot, a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, where my interest in the environment came was mostly from my teachers growing mm -hmm. up. They had a very, um, I would say they had a very green take on a lot of what they taught. And there was always an emphasis on environmental issues. And that's sort of the root of this, um, this line of work that I went into. Now, there must have been a personal interest in it, though, that you had as well. What, where did that come from? Oh, that's much simpler. That's just being a guy. I like playing in the dirt. Do you? Okay. Exactly. Uh, do you have any particular kind of dirt you like better than other dirt? Or? Oh, sandy loam. I like sandy loam. <laughs> sandy loam. Very good. Something with fairly low Edinburgh limits, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you graduated from high school, you obviously then looked at environmental type programs. What, what uh, kind of decisions, where did you look, and, and why did you finally decide to go where you went? Well, coming out of high school, uh, I looked more into sort of the social side of environmental issues, mm -hmm. uh, the social issues, um, distribution of wealth, uh, means of production, mm -hmm. and you know who owns what. Right. Uh, so, because of that, you know that was my sort of take on environmentalism. Mm -hmm. So I looked into programs that emphasize the social side, the social mm -hmm. component of environmental issues. So I ended up at York University. Uh, there. Bachelor of Environmental Studies is what I graduated mm -hmm. with, right. and my specialty was urban and regional environments. Oh, cool. So you, what years around did you go uh, through that program? Holy smokes, this was years ago. Uh, you don't look that old, Will. So. Oh, let's see, let's, I'm 26 now. I guess I started there about six years ago, maybe. Okay, good. Probably a little late, so, longer than that, maybe. Yeah. Now, it, looking back on your years uh, in environmental studies at York, uh, your undergraduate studies, what, what were some of the, did, did your focus change? Did you become uh, in, more interested in other topics as you went through that program and learned more about environmental issues? It did, actually. Uh, what I loved about the program was that it had such a broad view of environmental issues. Mm -hmm. So in addition, to, um, in addition to talking about the social components that I was interested in, mm -hmm. It also talked a little bit, you know, the program covered a lot of it in its, in its uh, fundamental courses. Mm -hmm. uh, they talked a bit about the technical side of it. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I was always, you know, I was always pretty interested in the sciences, mm -hmm. but it wasn't something that I thought about doing for a living. Right. But uh, around second year or so, I started taking some science courses as part of my electives. Mm -hmm. And it got me interested in a lot of the technical aspects of environmental issues mm -hmm. and how they're intricately tied to the social issues mm -hmm. and how one informs the other. Right. And as a result, after I, I, uh, I left uh, York, I went to Seneca for their, mm -hmm. their two-year diploma. Before we get to Seneca, and, I, and, and we will get there, sure. uh, talk about some of those areas, those scientific areas. I mean, the, when you talk about the environment and you talk about science, we're talking about a tremendous range. I mean, we're talking oh, about absolutely. the natural environment. We're even talking about the built environment. We're talking about different types of environmental impacts, air, water, uh, soil. Uh, anything in particular that appealed to you or that you wanted to examine in greater detail? It was kind of a happenstance. I took mm -hmm. chemistry, um, oh, okay. and, uh, specifically organic chemistry, and then it got me interested in a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. So what I divined from that experience was that everything is connected to everything else. Mm. Uh, so when we talk about chemistry, what I looked into in particular were, were photocatalytic semiconductors. Mm -hmm. But do you want to say that again? Photocatalytic semiconductors. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you want me to define that? No, no. It's <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. Uh, it wasn't necessarily the um, you know the material per se that I was interested in, but sort of how it was treated. Yeah. They found multiple uses for this material, mm -hmm. you know, that's tr treated typically mm -hmm. as, as fill, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, now in the grand scheme of things, what I found was that as a, as a, um, as a way, as a, one of the applications that they found for it was, was uh, VOC decontamination from mm -hmm. air. Right. But what I found essentially was that it was not a practical means of doing it. Mm -hmm. What it's more practical for is actually flexible solar cells. Mm -hmm. But I figured that if you can treat, you know, what we essentially think of as refuse, mm -hmm. Uh, if we can treat that with, with such uh, respect and such analytical uh, perspicacity, for instance, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we'd have a much more efficient world if we right. treat everything like that. Sure. So that's what I divine from my experiences in the technical side of things. 
Now, you, you obviously, uh, you completed the four-year degree at York University. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm assuming you, you wanted to do even more work on that kind of technical side of things and more the applied science side. What, what caused you to look at Seneca College and the environmental technology program as a place that you could expand your knowledge in that area? Oh, well, I took, I took a bit of time to look through the, the curriculum. Mm -hmm. uh, I looked at other schools as well, okay. and I thought that uh, Seneca's curriculum offered the range and versatility mm -hmm. uh, of a program that I liked and right. I, I responded to. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a bit of chemistry, there's a bit mm -hmm. of geotechnical stuff, there's a bit of water stuff, mm -hmm. and it's stuff that interests me. Right. You know, it's a, it's a range of stuff. Right. So, what areas really kind of caught your fancy when you went through the program? Because you, you, there are a range of options available. What, what kind of really appealed to you that, uh, that got you really kind of grabbed you by the throat and said, this is what I'd like to spend even more time on? Oh, initially I was interested in the uh, environmental chemistry, so water mm -hmm. analysis. Right. That was what I was looking forward to. Right. As I went through the program, I realized that I like water, but I also mm -hmm. liked, you know, geomechanics, soil mm -hmm. properties, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so that whole program, in terms of the two things I gathered from it, I like the chemistry, absolutely, but I also like the, the soil stuff as well. Mm -hmm. So, got to love the dirt. Good, well, wonderful. You, you must have had some professors too that you, you, you oh, enjoyed start? working with. Well, well tell us I about start? some of them and who were they? Uh, oh, let's see, first, okay, first and foremost, I guess the first guy that comes to my mind is Owen Steele. Mm -hmm. uh, a guy who has his quirks, I suppose. Right. Um, misunderstood at times, but a very uh, passionate person about what he does. Right. A uh, very intelligent person and mm -hmm. tries to get that to rub off on you. Right. Uh, sometimes it rubs you the wrong way, mm -hmm. but he means well nonetheless. Uh, Nagib well, Miller. Sometimes you have to have that challenge, oh. though, don't you, to learn? Oh, yeah, true. Right. Uh, and he believes in being a teacher right. first and foremost. Okay. Um, Nagib Miller. Yes. Um, very personable. Yeah. Um, very compelled to help you when you mm -hmm. have an issue. Yeah. David Joseph, you never find a guy that works harder. Right. Uh, even the, the teachers that didn't have as instructors but worked right. with, uh, such as Christine Duty Hamilton. Right. I honestly think she's my guardian angel here. Right. Um, now, now talk, talk <laughs> about Christine because Christ, uh, Professor Duty Hamilton, you, you did some detailed research with her as well one summer, I, yes. I understand. Tell uh, that, us a little bit more about that. Uh, that was my uh, my uh, co-opposition with Seneca, right? Uh, and well, as a, as a person, uh, mm -hmm. she's uh, she's very curious, right? Uh, very knowledgeable, mm -hmm. and that thirst for knowledge is is never quenched. She's always looking for right. more things. Um, very fair person. Mm -hmm. uh, as a professional, um, same same thing. Honestly, she. She's a very fair person. We'll give now, what people was a chance. The, what was the nature of the research, though, you were undertaking with her under that co-op program? Uh, we were designing a, um, we we're designing an air filter, essentially. Right. Uh, a biological one. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, using plants, using and plants. soil, and well, actually, no soil. Uh, that okay. was actually one of the uh, one of the okay. points of conflict right. we had with our uh, business partner. Is mm -hmm. that uh, you know what's actually doing the filtration? Is it the actual plant or is it mm -hmm. the the soil? Uh, I honestly believe that it's a synergy of both. Okay. Good. Uh, but yeah. uh, my job there wasn't to question the science; it was right. to apply it. Okay. So, and and you were able to do that over the summer, yes. then, were you? Yep. And uh, yeah. learned hydraulics in the process, which is always a bonus. Great. Great. Now, you, you graduated from the two-year environmental technology program as as a technician. Mm -hmm. um, an opportunity came up with the Toronto and Region Conservation Authority. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that opportunity. It was really a, a lucky break. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the courses I had to take was water resource modeling. Mm -hmm. uh, and the instructor there was uh, is a guy, um, Shazad Khan. Mm -hmm. He's very, he's compelled to do good. Like, right. You know, uh, given the circumstances, he did all right. But mm -hmm. uh, he was compelled to help people and get mm -hmm. their break. Mm -hmm. And what he did uh, first thing after the final exam was he went up to a bunch of students mm -hmm. that he considered, uh, you know, competent at least. Right. And said, well, are you interested in a position mm -hmm. uh, with the TRSA? Mm -hmm. I, he couldn't guarantee it at the time, but mm -hmm. he said that he can talk and right. see if things work out. And you know, uh, he contacted me, mm -hmm. and uh, here I am. Now, tell us, what are you doing at the Toronto and Region Conservation Authority? I work uh, in the Water Resources Engineering Department. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. That's with the Ecology Division. Right. And would you like to know more, like exactly what yeah, would you like yeah, to know about some, it? What are some of the, you know, without giving away any corporate secrets, what are some corporate of the, secrets. <laughs> what are some of the things you might do on a daily basis in the, on the, in the job? Uh, the majority of what I've done so far has been permanent review. Okay. Uh, if, 
if we want to elaborate, it's very simple. What we do, we're a review organization. Right. That's what we do. So right. uh, we work with municipalities. Right. We work with sometimes we work with people with private right. property. Yes. But generally, what we do is we want to protect natural features. Right. Uh, the experiences date back to Hurricane Hazel. Mm -hmm. Uh, there was a tremendous loss of life and property. And that was uh, around 1954, 1954 as I believe. exactly. Right. And right. when the Humber River overflowed its banks. And yep. And there were properties that were nearby. Right. And they were swept. And a lot of people were killed. Yep. Yes. Right. And uh, what happened was that what we do essentially is that we, we use water models. Mm -hmm. you know, I think uh, students at Seneca will be familiar with Hecras and VO2. Right. Okay. Uh, one being hydraulics, the other being hydrology. Right. We use the hydrology to figure out how much water we might get in right. this kind of storm, say a hurricane okay. hazel. Good. And we use the hydraulics to figure out how far from the river that's going to flood. Mm -hmm. And then from that, we, uh, we create what's called a, a flood line limit right. on which development, new development cannot right. occur. Okay. And development that's currently on it, mm -hmm. there's, only a li there's a limit to which you can develop. Right. Right. So y your task, as much as anything, is a, a, a developer, say, would come to you or to the Toronto, go through a permitting process, and it, and it would end up at the Toronto Region Conservation Authority to, to ensure that the, any development that occurs is going to be consistent with the, the water regimes in, in the area, I would take it. And yep, I, at, at and, its core, that's what we do. And, and so there's really an element here of protecting the public safety as much as the environment and public health and yep. whatnot. You yeah, can't have excellent. humans with their environment and vice versa. Well, maybe you can have environment without humans. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us, Will, I mean, you're, you're 26, you mentioned that. Um, tell us what some of your long-term goals are in life. What, what kind of work would you like to do down the road? What, would you like to work more in the private sector, more in the public sector? Would you like to be on the academic side? Would you, would you like to be, uh, you know, consulting? What, what kind of work do you see yourself doing in the future? When I talk to people about my past, I tell them I like it just as much as my future. I prefer multiple choice. Right. Uh, but as it stands now, I'd like to get involved with a consulting firm, get some mm -hmm. more experience, okay. and hopefully return to an organization like the TRCA right. with that experience, because that experience will inform my job yes. a lot better. Right. So, so I guess the message, would you have a message for students who are uh, either contemplating a, a coming into a college or university in an environmental field, what they should expect, what, uh, you know, what's, what's going to happen when they come into this field? Is, this all, is, is there a lot to learn? Is this something they can pick up very quickly? What, what would be your kind of words of advice to a, a, a student? It's always easier to, easier to get a specific situation than it is a general one. So right. let's try to generalize then, because it's fun. Uh, I'd say be flexible, honestly. Yeah. You don't ever stop learning. Right. Uh, even when I first took up a position here, I right. actually didn't stop learning. I actually had to really brush up on my hydraulics, right. get some of my calculus under control, mm -hmm. and on top of all that, learn specifically what our criteria is. Right. Right? So studying is not just something you do in school, it's something you do for life. Right. So I say get used to that. Above all, you know, be open to talking to people. Right. Just people in the field mm -hmm. that are passionate about what they do and right. sharing it, what they yeah. do, yeah. that will rub off on you. Any kind of final words to say about the environment itself, your kind of perspective on the challenges we face uh, in that whole dynamic of as humans connecting with the environment itself, observations you've made as a, as a, just as a, as a person, but also as a professional now in the field. <laughs> Professional. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, is this a dangerous area to ask you? Or <laughs> no, it's it's fine. I, I okay. don't have a problem sharing this opinion. Okay. Uh, I alluded to to it before. Basically, uh, you know, the environment will be fine without us. Right. You know what we call the environment. That is. Mm -hmm. uh, what we have to do as uh, you know as a people is learn to live with it. Right. Live in balance with it. Okay. And I think the majority of our environmental conflicts, you know, they're intricately tied with economic issues, mm -hmm. as much as they are technological, as much as they are social, uh, social issues. So at its core, I think environmental issues are ideological. Mm -hmm. So moving forward as a society, you know, we have to learn that balance means giving some things up, mm -hmm. changing some parts of your lifestyle, mm -hmm. and that progress is not a linear measure. It's, right. it's multifaceted. And sometimes you have to take a few steps back mm -hmm. and take a good look at the big picture mm -hmm. and then pick a spot in the picture and go for it. Excellent. Wilfred Ho, a graduate of environmental technology at Seneca, um, working at the Toronto and Region Conservation Authority. And uh, some great messages for prospective students, students already in programs, and even those who are entering the workplace themselves. On behalf of uh, 
the alumni at Seneca College. Thank you very much, and you're a, you're a great ambassador for our program. Thank you for having me, Bill.